Digitalization goes along with all these massive transformations on a cultural and social level. What does this have to do with aesthetic, arts and cultural education? Digital technologies are all over our society and we have to discuss and define uh, the role of arts in this society where in many situations the arts appear to disappear. What is digital music and how could we get there to really understand the potentials? What these new instruments really bring to the audience and their ability or not to offer a new musical experience. How is it possible by music making via digital tools um, to sense the others? I would love to have more collaboration between designer, artists and educators. I wish that we could create a sort of um, space to sing and act which uses music and technologies as powers to create more self-determination in our lives. How those interfaces uh, shape the outcome of the creative process. It's really not certain that the cultural capital that music schools uh, are offering today will continue to be in demand in the future. How I can develop social and creative ideas through interaction with the people, the technology and the music. What is the role of arts education in tomorrow's society? This new format is accompanied by common promises of digitalization like lowering access restrictions, participation, freedom and the democratization of the music culture. So this conference here mixing artists with no. researchers coming from social science, educational science is in a way an opportunity to share these ideas. A decade ago, they would have been extremely difficult for most people to work with, but the cost of these technologies and also the information required to use them and the ease of use of these technologies is, um, tr is changing enormously. So it's a very exciting time to be involved in um, music hardware. It's a really interesting time to be talking about digitization in the music industry because we're forced to become more digital in general as humans from the way we interact with each other on a daily basis. We are using digital software and hardware as an extension of our traditional uh, instrument and that's that's really great uh, advantage that we can use them all together. We can build up different hybrid systems, we are using different extended systems. Now the digital is melting with the analog reel and it's not already clear what kind of uh, interface are standard. There are first standards, but um, there are many ideas in the field and very different things. What we're trying to do is to change the way that people compose and perform music using computers. And the way that we think that should be done is by capturing the kind of expressive power of the human body. So these are the Mimi gloves and they're wireless, wearable and gestural musical instrument. When you are concerned with digital technologies, you always have to remember that there is a lot more than just one technology, but there are thousands of thousands of music apps for learning and making music. The hype about digital media and music education is partly on it allows equal access to everyone. And what we found out is it, that's not really true. It is, as we have all learned during the pandemic, 
It's the better educated ones who can make better use of digital media. On the one hand, all this digitization thing is threatening, it's big, it has impact on my daily life. But there's also those people in the field of music education that are actually interested in working more with music apps and digital instruments. But the thing is, it's personal interest and a lot of work additionally to the work that you do as a music teacher. Digital literacy has become a major issue of education and I guess that music can respond to this in a quite uh, fun and, and, uh, and pertinent way. So we have to imagine projects that transform the classroom in like a laboratory for kids and uh, art can be a facilitator of, of learning. Most of the things that you saw just there were done with zero code. So it's technology that anyone can use um, with no experience at all um, to get started making your own instruments um, from, from classroom friendly technologies to like home studio tinkering. My uh, PhD now uh, is at the border between uh, education, design and in, uh, computer human interaction. It's actually uh, an interface uh, that uh, allow me to tell sound stories in motion using smartphone. Using all the sensors inside the smartphone and we don't actually use the screen. When it comes to the role of uh, music education, for example in social cultural centers, hip-hop has a great standing which is a loop-based music culture and therefore you need more of these devices than in uh, music schools which often have uh, a more classical highbrow curriculum. With those new technologies it's more about composing, more about having ideas, you don't have to be the best um, a haptical instrumentalist. It's more about uh, conceptual ideas also. And you, you have to find an idea what you want to make because you can make almost everything. Uh, I'm motivated to search for something familiar and maybe a bit forgotten, I mean, our senses um, and uh, the variety of experiences that we might have just within our bodies, such as movement or vocalizing and so on, how the empowerment uh, could be uh, implemented through this combination of technology and music. The question is the embodiment. It cannot be achieved with digital musical instruments because the flow of energy is between your finger and the sound and between your body and your other body is broken. And then how can we restore this type of embodiment with digital musical instruments? Of course, multi-touch screens we have in our pockets are great and uh, um, as you can build interface uh, you like, but the problem is you still have to observe it to push the right button in the right place. It is completely useless when you play music live following score, let's say, or observing conductor or other musicians. Creativity doesn't come automatically when you have a music app. You also have to understand the design of many apps and you also have to learn them by heart. This is a common criticism on digital music technologies that we will live in a disembodied world. But all of these instruments are, in fact, interfaces. And the interface is changing. If you have an iPad, you can connect it to a keyboard and then you can play just on a keyboard interface. But if you have a body that isn't able to use those traditional interfaces, then we as pedagogues have to find new ways. I think about 
students that are in a wheelchair and they use a communication device via eye tracking. It's an app you can use with your eye tracking system. So this can really play music, a whole, a whole song. We have sensors like the camera or uh, we, we could move uh, the iPad and then by moving the iPad we change tones. The function of an instrument is to transform a musical idea into sound and then it's not that important if it's a digital instrument or an analog instrument. It's about to, um, to make some, something going to sound which before was inside a person and was a musical idea or a musical wish or a musical feeling, whatever. And what is really important about musical education to um, give all the people who want to have it the experience to put an, an inner musical wish or an inner musical idea into sound that it's outside, everybody can hear this, everybody can react on this. If a child has a hand disease like this and have a lot and it's very hard for him to put his hand like this, with this, this instrument, firstly, he goes to go circles but a few minutes later the end is over and the end just like Seiko is playing one bit just like this on the one side you have the constraint that you always need to know about this technological point of views or you need technological insights to be able to handle it. On the other side, um, you have in process of empowerment, you have new groups interested in making music. Indeed, we see new forms of collaborations emerging and it's not always the classic band context, mostly not. The interfaces really shape what we do and how we do it and how we understand things. So if you look through Ableton onto music, you, you get a special idea of what music is. Those things change aesthetics also. And boundaries between different kinds of arts are also becoming fragile. It's a different kind of creativity, maybe asked. I'm personally very interested in experimental music techniques. And that's one of the reasons why I started my YouTube channel to explore these and share these. And now I've started to apply everything that I've learned into instrument building. And I built instruments that are inspired by what Karl-Heinz Stockhausen did in the 50s and I took them to something I feel is new and modern. We have not so many uh, possibilities for artists to self-deterministically distribute their music in the way they want. All these kind of systems are um, made by um, social media companies who also have their own economic um, agenda and, um, um, and so on. The subject of um, a commoning, a community building around uh, product, musical production but also around the musical uh, consumption can be a kind of uh, solution uh, for the future. I think we've redefined um, some of the functions of digital tools because of the COVID pandemic. And now um, questions like, how do we address all the new forms of digital exclusion that we've learned about? Mm. How do we design the new digital tools or improve the tools that we already are familiar with in order to make them truly uh, collaborative and empowering communities, for instance, not just individuals. Well, we've gotten to a stage now where people are um, able to use new technologies to start creating their own. And something that's very interesting to me is the idea of 
musicians not just being consumers of music technology, but actually being creators of music technology as well. Instrument building has been a part of Chicks on Speed since, yeah, since we started and we're not interested in just taking samplers or what was there. And we very fast, um, early on, just building performance tools and also seeing how it also changed the way our body moves, how we perform on stage. Is there a new uh, style of music, so like a new zeitgeist? If we can embrace these sort of, let's say, messy mistake type situations, we can actually develop new types of of music and new types of performance if we, you know, if we're just open to it. So we just have to experiment with them and be open to these sort of forms of experimentation collectively. Most people have that preconception that they are not musical at all and that they cannot sing and would never be able to play an instrument. And I think this is very harmful. Quite often children are the, the ones that approach our installations because I, I think many adults are already used to the fact that when you are in a museum or in a gallery, you should behave like a serious person and, and uh, get less shy when, when they see their young, young children doing it in front of them. So this is kind of empowerment. Can you make music with an aesthetic experience of a higher order? by letting the audience do the music? Well, it, um, it depends on what you call aesthetic, evidently. I'm always astonished uh, how much music comes with presumptions and, and prefabricated ideas of mus what music actually is from the side of musicians. Up to where the artist step back, and when he can still step in, in a way. And this margin, this little adjustment between stepping back and stepping in, I think it's definitely very interesting. My wish is to find instruments that are really designed for pedagogy without losing the expressivity of real acoustic instruments. I think inclusion and all, all big transformations, um, they depend on positive experience. And if it's a possibility to do it with digital instruments, we should try this and we should, um, we have to know much more about this possibility. Methods of artistic research are not really well developed in Germany, but I think there's something that uh, we should develop more and at least our um, area of cultural education is really needed. Is it serving artistic expression? Or is it just reproducing something old on the, the capitalistic nature of the market, promoting Western values and at the same time making other values, other musical material disappear? The technology can, can be very spectacular. They can have some kind of impact on how you develop something, but we never have to forget that we are artists and that beyond the technology, there is a deep artistic thought and, and you know, wishes. I think it's really important for more artists to have this ability to play with these tools and kind of help create new narratives and give people new examples so they can really understand what the technology is. And I think giving it in the hands of creators is like the best way. There will be no process of change unless dissenting views on digitalization bring forth alternatives to the hegemonial implementations of digitality that shape our current present. So we have to discover where and how we want to apply our own politics of the senses and our own politics of the technological. We can learn to think and sense differently and in an empowering way. And this is what aesthetic education should be about.